Hey, what's up, YouTube? This is iPhone Monitor here, and today I'm going to be talking about the new iOS 7 that was announced at WWDC 2013. First, I want to start off by saying that I've already done two other videos on WWDC. One of them was about the new OS 10 Mavericks, and the other one is about the new Macs and iCloud that was announced at WWDC. To check out those videos, the two links are down in the description below, and also I'm going to link to them at the annotations at the end of this video. So let's get started. <laughs> Alright guys, so just letting you know it's going to be kind of a long video because I'm going to go very into depth on iOS and talking about exactly what they announced at the keynote. So the first thing, which is a huge deal, is a completely new overhaul of iOS. So basically the new redesign, I'm going to include pictures on my right over here, and includes a lot of translucency, which you'll see it's kind of like omnipotent throughout the whole OS. A lot of menus that you bring up are actually translucent, so you can see what's behind them, and the color schemes kind of match each other too. Also there's new icons, they're more flat, they're less uh, rounded, I guess, and they're also look more modern modern and futuristic. And also they pretty much redesign every single stock app, including the calculator, the weather, the weather actually looks really cool and the mail and everything like that. So it's really cool. And I think it's very great that they've actually redesigned the stock apps to fit the new Metro UI that they've kind of introduced. Also another cool thing about the new redesign is that it actually tracks your eyes to provide a little bit of a 3D effect. This used to actually be a jailbreak tweak, which is actually kind of interesting because every software update, it seems that Apple kind of adopts some jailbreak tweaks or just some things from Android, which I mean, makes sense because some of them are actually pretty good things to implement but this was very interesting because actually it gives you depth of field to your phone so when you're looking at it and you turn it around it follows your eyes and then you can kind of see behind the icons a little bit so it basically just provides better depth of field for your phone and also in my opinion I think this looks a lot like Windows phone especially with a lot of the Metro UI that's going on in there and just the menus and how everything looks so translucent just in general I have a Windows phone so I've been able to compare it it looks a fair deal like Windows phone and I'm actually very happy about that because I enjoyed the Metro UI of Windows phone a lot and I did think it's something that Apple should adopt. Additionally, with your folders now, you can have multiple pages, so you can essentially swipe through the pages of your folders if you want to have a lot of stuff in one folder. And also, they've changed Notification Center a bit, so essentially what you can do is have something called Today View, where it gives you a list of everything that's going on today in your life and a little sneak peek of tomorrow. So for example, it'll say the weather and whose birthday it is today and etc. And also, now your Notification Center is available from your lock screen, so you no longer have to unlock your phone in order to access the Notification Center. Alright guys, so that's for the new redesign, so let's just talk about some new things which are like their big 10 things that they announced for iOS 7. The first thing is called control center. So basically if you guys have ever jailbreaking your iDevice it's a lot like SB settings. So essentially what it allows you to do is drag up from the bottom and you have that translucent menu. So it allows you to adjust things like brightness and allows you to turn on and off airplane mode and also a really cool thing is they finally introduced the flashlight feature so you don't have to download those stupid third-party apps from the app store in order to use a flashlight on your iPhone. Another cool thing that they've introduced is multitasking and this multitasking is non-limited so it is unlimited multitasking. So a lot of your apps actually are very limited on the multitasking because Apple limits the amount of multitasking that a third party app can utilize on your iDevice. So essentially what this new multitasking does is it preserves great battery life according to them, but it also lets you use all of your phone's resources in order to multitask. And then also multitask based on which app you use the most. So on apps that you don't use a lot, it kind of cuts down on that multitasking, but on apps that you do, it allows you to multitask more, thus providing you a better experience with the app. Also there's a completely new interface for moving between the apps. So before when you double click on the home button it'll just bring up that little bottom tray and now when you double click it actually brings up the new window so you can actually swipe between the different windows of multitasking you have open I think this is really cool because it's more of a visual interface whereas the other one was not as visual additionally they announced a completely new and redesigned Safari which is actually expected because they announced a new one for Mac OS 10 Mavericks and basically this new Safari allows you to do things like tabs and the tab browsing is actually really cool again it's more like a visual interface not just the tab thing on the top it's actually you can switch between the tabs and now you can finally delete tabs and also this has integration with iCloud Keychain. So basically what this allows you to do is just save the passwords across your different websites. And if you want to know more about iCloud Keychain, go check out my Mac OS X Mavericks video and the links down in the description below. Also, they've introduced parental controls, which aren't that big of a deal. And they've improved the bookmarks, so it's easier to bookmark something and just click it once and it's bookmarked. And they've introduced shared links to the iOS version as well, in addition to the Mac version, which essentially allows you to see what links your social media friends have shared. And also now you can use Safari on your reading list on your iOS device. And in addition to the new tab interface, 
the new Safari actually allows you to sync tabs across all of your different iOS devices, and you can just reorder your tabs by tapping and holding instead of having to have them in a specific order. Now you can finally reorder them. Alright guys, so the fourth thing that they introduced was AirDrop. So if you guys don't know, AirDrop is a thing where it allows you to share files amongst different Macs, and I think you do need a Wi-Fi network for this to work, but now they've actually introduced it for the iOS devices. So this uses peer-to-peer -peer Wi-Fi networks, and it allows you to share anything, videos, pictures, files, anything. But unfortunately, it's only supported on the iPhone 5, iPad mini, iPad 4th gen, and iPod touch 5th gen. So they've kind of limited the amount of devices that can use this, apparently because the older devices can't handle it, but that's just always some bogus to make you upgrade to a newer device. So additionally, they've introduced a completely redesigned camera. So this camera actually has four options. The first one is video, the second is panoramic camera, third is still camera, and the fourth is square, which pretty much means a cropped camera. So now with the new cameras, you can actually do live photos with the still pictures, which is actually really cool because it just gives you more control over how you want your photos to look like. And also the photos app is completely redesigned. They've added something called moments, which is essentially just a new way of organizing how your photos look like. And it organizes it based on date and location. So let's say I go for a trip for a while, then it'll automatically organize it based on where I went. It'll say, okay, I went to Pioneer Park. I went to Avalanche Park, whatever. It just organizes it by itself. I don't even have to do anything. It requires no user input whatsoever, which is actually very cool. Cause if you think about it, a lot of us get lazy and just have that whole running list of photos going through our photos app, which actually gets kind of annoying when you're trying to find a good photo to show. Additionally, moments are drawn into things called collections. So basically that's how you can combine a multi-day trip into one little collage of photos. And also you can organize the photos by the year levels, basically just zooming out on your moments. And then it organizes by let's say 10, 11, 12, 2013, 2014, etc. And also you can edit photos with photo filters and the filters pretty much look like Instagram's filters, which I guess kind of pisses off Instagram, but it's good for a lot of iOS users. Also, you can share photos through AirDrop, social media, and iCloud. And now with iCloud now, you can choose which photo streams you want to share your photos to. So now you can have shared photo streams or private photo streams. So you can share it with your friends or choose to just put it on your own private photo stream. And also for the first time now, you can share videos through iCloud. So now they've talked about a little bit of how they updated Siri and the first new thing is that Siri has a completely new redesigned interface and this interface just looks more sleek and goes with the new Metro UI of the iOS 7 design and also which I think is the coolest part Siri has new voices there's a male and a female voice and they did change the female voice to something different as well and now Siri has more functionality over your phone so before if you remember if you asked it to do things like open my app like open Safari open mail it wouldn't do that it said it doesn't have permission to do that but now Siri is actually granted more permission to do things for you on your phone for example, it can do things like play my last voicemail, turn on Bluetooth, increase my brightness, etc. And also it can answer more questions now because it has a search base of Twitter, Bing, and Wikipedia. So now it can search things a lot better. One of the coolest things in my opinion that they talked about was iOS in the car. So basically now iOS starting from about 2014 mainly, a lot of car manufacturers such as Mercedes-Benz and BMW, Infinity, etc. are going to start to integrate iOS into the screen of your car. So basically you can use your eyes free car navigation using Siri. And this is basically just to integrate Siri more on the car. It allows you to use things like maps, music, phones, and messages. So you can basically just say the message you want Siri to display, or say the directions, or say the call you want to call. So this is actually very cool, and they will start introducing this, like I said, in 2014. Also, they just talked about a little bit of new tweaks and updates to the App Store. So there's like new ways of finding apps. So basically now you can search for the apps that are most popular in your location, so in your city, which is actually kind of interesting, I guess. You can search what people around you download the most, and what's most popular in your city and your area. Also, you can search best app for kids and things like that. And the main feature they added, which is actually really cool, is now the App Store updates your apps automatically without any user input. So you don't have to do anything, type in your password, go check what it says, anything. It's just all automatic. You don't have to get that stupid badge every time you have an update now. And now let's talk about something that's really cool. They updated the music and movies app. So now you can see your artist images in the library and also allows you to see all of your purchased music from iCloud. And now the movies app lets you see your purchased movies and TV shows from iCloud. And the coolest thing that was very very anticipated was iTunes radio. So basically they try to promote this as a new way to discover music, but essentially it's like Pandora. So what happens is it's free if you want to get ads on it, but if you have an iTunes match subscription, then it's free without ads. So for basically most of us, it's gonna be free, but we're gonna have some ads. So it's kind of like Pandora and Spotify. It's like Pandora in the sense that you can skip through songs and you basically have a certain amount of skips. They didn't specify how many, and then you have to listen to ads along the way as well. And it's built right into the new music app. So you don't have to download anything from the app store. It's built right into the phone for you. And the way they have it organized is really cool. You can search for things like summer songs and then just have like a channel called summer songs. And then you can click on summer songs and it plays stuff that have to do with that. You can rate it up, you can rate it down, say if you never want to listen to it again, say you like songs like this, 
then it basically tries to get a taste of what you like and recommend songs for that taste. So they use the example of creating a station of Led Zeppelin where it played Led Zeppelin songs, Rolling Stone songs, Beatles songs, just stuff like that. And it basically just tries to get an idea of what you like and you get to listen to the full songs and everything too. So basically it's just a cool way to discover new music without having to actually buy the song. So your iTunes radio is going to be built into your music app or your iTunes on your Mac, PC, iOS, and Apple TV. So guys, that's pretty much it for the main things I announced. I'm just going to talk about some of the small things because those things kind of get overlooked after the conference. So one of them is FaceTime audio. So now you can make high quality audio only calls instead of also having to have FaceTime video calls. So yeah, this basically just allows you to make as many calls as you want for free and it's only audio so you don't have to worry about having to FaceTime and all that. Also, they announced phone, FaceTime, and message blocking. So if someone's pissing you off or annoying you, you can just block their account or block their number immediately. Also, they've announced something called activation lock, which I actually like a lot. It's basically to deter thieves from stealing your phone. So once they steal it, even if they wipe it out, if they ever want to activate your iOS device again, they're going to actually have to have your account login information to activate it. So basically, this just makes it harder for them to gain access to your iOS device once they have stolen it. Okay, so the iOS 7 beta for the iPhone and iPod Touch is available today, and they said that for the iPad, it's going to be available a little bit later. But for the public, this whole thing is coming out in the fall, likely with the announcement of the new iPhone. So basically, just so you guys know, the devices that support the new iOS 7 are the iPad 2 and later, so iPad 2, iPad 3, iPad 4, the iPhone 4 and later, which includes the 4, 4S, and 5, and the iPad mini, and the iPod Touch 5th generation and later, whenever the later one comes out. So guys, thanks for watching this video. I know it was a long one, but just trying to give you as much information as I can from the WWDC 2013 event. If you guys want to know the other stuff that went on at the event yesterday, please click on the two links down in the description below. And also there will be two annotations at the end of this video that will take you to the two videos. One of them is about Mac OS X Mavericks, and the other one is about the new Macs and the new iCloud and iWork integration that was announced at this conference. So guys, thank you so much for watching, and ultimately, have a nice day.